Hi hobby friends! Getting a relatively fussy character unit done in about five or six hours of painting. Yeah, I reckon we can do that. This week we're going to tackle the elven queen of the dead, Ivraine, and her lovely feline companion. I'll be honest here, Ivraine and the Incarn are both the sorts of models that I really needed to see in person to like. I didn't think they were for me until they landed on my desk as part of a commission, and when I got done with that job, well, I decided I'd better get the lady for my own Eldar collection. As you can see, Ivrain gets a base coat of Molotow Petrol, which is a lovely greenish blue grey colour, and our pussycat here gets decked out in purple. Choosing a good base can make a big difference in your efficiency on a speed paint job, and here's a hint for you, you probably don't want to start from black. In the case of our cat here, the purple acts as a lovely complement to this turquoise, setting the foundation of a triadic scheme, and more concretely, making our cat look suitably sci-fi. With those basic colours down, we can build up some soft, fluffy chest and belly areas, with a transition first to magenta, and then a pastel peach tone. It's no secret that an airbrush is a pretty indispensable tool if your goal is efficient painting, but it isn't all about the tool, it's also about how you use it. Investing some time in learning finer control with your airbrush will pay back serious dividends down the line. A quick, gentle highlight with Largo Blue Pastel and our cat is 90% done. Back to Evrain herself, and it's much simpler here, just finish off the airbrushing with a value sketch done in titanium white ink. Note though, it is a value sketch, not just a zenithal highlight. That means I'm trying to get a grayscale image of what I want my final piece to look like. So anywhere that needs to be high value gets more white, like the hair for example, and anywhere that wants to be dark I'm trying to avoid, like the shadows. That petrol base blends with the white to make a lovely steely grey that I think works perfectly for moody, cool whites, and it will interact with some of our other colours down the line in interesting ways as well. That's basically it for airbrushing, let's tackle Ivrain's black undersuit next. This is kind of a modified version of Juan Hidalgo's recipe I guess, or a properly realised version of what I was trying to do way back when I experimented with underpainting for black. In any case, I think the results are great, and it could not be simpler. Over our value sketch I laid down some turquoise express colour paint from Vallejo, just one even layer all over the undersuit. When that was completely dry I grabbed the lotus black express colour, and applied that in three slightly thinned layers. The only reason I'm thinning the paints here is to maintain control of the opacity, and of course you need to let each layer dry completely before the next one goes down. While we're here, and since we're waiting, we can do the bit on Ivrain that is actually turquoise, that zany, excessively delicate headdress she's got on. I actually used GW's Ethermatic Blue first here, and then the Express Turquoise as a shade colour on the lower parts of the feathers, just to give it a bit more depth. And here's somewhere else we can put that turquoise to use as well, and kill some more drying time. Thinned down contrast paints make for a great glaze. I'm using the Vallejo Express Medium here as thinner, but honestly water is fine for this job. Just one thin glaze feathered out before it hits the purple bits really draws those layers together. We're at risk of this video turning into a love letter to contrast style paints, but they really are very useful for so many jobs. Here's another application, wet blending. The slow drying times and silky consistency make them ideal for this technique. I'm using them here to build a flamboyant gradient from the back part of Evrain's train to the front. I feel like this drawing down of the colour temperature suits her deathly theme, and keeps that rich, decadent feel the original wine red scheme has. 
The trick here is to avoid fussing too much. Get a nice wet patch of paint on the mini, clean out your brush quickly, apply the next color and then just bring them together. If you overmix, you'll end up with either a muddy mess or worse, reactivating and lifting your white inks, which is a slight risk with such a loose, wet technique. If you're really worried, you can throw down a layer of varnish, but work quickly and delicately and you should be all good. The colors here are Baal Red, Flesh Terror Red, Volupus Pink and Leviathan Purple and those are all listed along with all the other paints I used in the description below. All right, while we're doing delicate work, let's tackle that skin. This is another place where the interaction between our blue and white sketch and our transparent contrast paints is really going to pay off. I'm applying Gilliman's Flesh to Ivrain's skin here. No lewd jokes, please. But I've thinned it down a fair bit with that express medium from earlier. What I'm looking for is just to add a slight peachy tint to the cool, pale underpainting. The mixture of the blues, whites and now peaches leaves us with a wonderful pallid flesh that I really love on Evrain. The barest hint of that volupus pink added to the tip of the nose, the ears and the cheeks and slightly more heavily on the lips really adds an extra something too. Remember, gentleness is key here. With transparent paints like this, it's infinitely easier to add than it is to take away. Let's do something a bit more technical now, blocking out Evrain's gauntlet in silver. A quick base of a dark silver and a very rudimentary highlighting with a bright one and then we can coat the whole glove in that Baal red. And later a little extra shading with flesh tears and even some leviathan purple. This is a nice simple way to get some textural variation while keeping our colour scheme tight. It's also maybe something like how I'd approach some other Inari allied red suit of armour wearing mini. If you'd like to see me do something like that, let me know in the comments below. I'm sure Evrain would look extra badass with a bodyguard at her side. She's coming together now, but there's a glaring gap in our scheme here, all that gold. No fancy tricks here, I'm afraid, just plain old steady hand and some gold paint. Often, with very fine filigree like this, you want to paint across the details rather than along them, but it still requires just the right amount of paint on your brush and a good brush tip too. Take it slow and don't sweat the mistakes. Clean up any bloops as quickly as you can and especially on the black parts, you can get away with adding in some more of that Black Lotus Express colour to hide any serious sins. The gold here was built up over that base with two progressively lighter highlights as well. Oh, and don't forget the bajillion soul stones here, there and all up in her fabulous hair. It's a similar story with the detailing on the train, just with black instead of gold. And I'm definitely going to cut some corners here to save time. No highlighting or anything, just a straight coat of black. Okay, all this is pretty arduous work. I need a quick fix of fun. Fancy seeing a dirty little commission painter's secret? Here's how I do swords when I don't have time to waste. Grab yourself some cling film, an airbrush, some black and some metallic airbrush paints and pull that cling film over the blade like you see me do here so that just the bit you want to paint is exposed. And then you can mask the rest of the mini by wrapping it up. Black that sucker out and when that's dry do a pass of gunmetal through the airbrush. You want to catch the blade at an oblique angle, leaving some bits completely black and fading up to your silver colour. Bonus points if you can get the right angle to have the faces of the blade counter shaded. Throw on some aluminium metal colour to pump those highlights and guess what? You're done! Probably about 5 minutes of work for a very passable blade. This works great for power weapons too, you just need to swap out the metallic paint for white and do a coat of some transparent colour you like at the end. Just be careful removing the wrap if your model is super duper delicate. 
Time to change gears now and get out the regular opaque acrylics, starting with touch-ups and highlights on the white. Neat Titanium White is an extremely bold paint though, so I just mixed a teeny bit of blue to get it to off-white. Amazing what a few brush strokes can do to enliven a mini. Righto, it's time to get some slow and finicky work done again. The gems. Just for fun though, and because I think it looks good, let's start with a chromatic black of sorts. This one is made from our two main colours, red and turquoise, which happen to be more or less opposite on the colour wheel, and that happens to be more or less how you mix a chromatic black. The extreme opposition of the chroma here cancel out to a super dark shade. I missed filming it, but this ended up being your bog standard gem technique, highlighting up the lower corner of the gem and then adding a dot of white to the opposite side. The neat thing about starting from this chromatic black is that I can use the same base on the red and turquoise gems, just adding more and more red or turquoise to that base black to build up my highlights. While I get at all those gems, let me say a big thank you to all these gems, my lovely and superlative patrons. If you'd like to join that list and support the channel, head to the Patreon page linked below, and you can show some love for free by hitting the like and sub buttons too. There's also an open Discord you can come along and hang out in, where all manner of fabulous folk share their hobby love. My Instagram account is down there too if you want to see some more of my minis. We are nearly there friends, just the last optional but entirely obligatory step, some highlights. I'm really focused on the folds in the dress here and it's a chance to mix up some beautiful tones. With a little white we can lift that chromatic black into this gorgeous purple pastel colour and then with reds and bone white I can push it around into pinks and pale reds to work over the edges of the dress. These subtle, complicated colours are sometimes missed in the bombast of mini painting, but man, they are really pretty. Short, rapid and delicate flicks of progressively paler shades add some fluffy texture to our cat familiar here, and some orange eyes complete his triad, and then… All done, there she is, my take on Ivraine, whipped out in about 5 or 6 hours of painting over the course of one day. For a tabletop mini I think she'll do just fine, but what do you think? And do you think she needs some other Inari friends to keep her company? Let me know down below and I will catch you all next time.